I buy faulty electronic items, attempt to fix them and sell them for a profit. I log all of that information here in Sally's Spectacular Spreadsheet. The Nintendo Switch from the last episode, episode number five of season two, managed to sell after eBay fees for £85.44. pence. I guess that we would net around £44.90 for this and we netted £44.45. That in itself, is a nice little win. I have a bit of an issue and it is that this Nintendo Switch from episode number three, I said my estimated sell price would be £85. I currently have it listed on my eBay for £70 and it's still not selling. Bear in mind I buy these for £50, sell them for £70 is ridiculous. Not the greatest business move in any way, shape or form. I have however sold the PlayStation 5 that was faulty. I thought I'd be able to sell it for about £160 and after eBay fees I managed to sell it for £161.88 which means we only had a loss of £6.11. This means that we go from minus two hundred eight from episode number five to now a green positive of 38 pounds 34 welcome your faces back to episode number six season two of the series profit or loss what have you got your hands on today joey we really really need to be making a profit here i've got my hands on a really interesting nintendo switch how much did i pay for it absolutely nothing this console is specifically from a viewer called jamil and this is what jamil has said he said been watching since rocket repairs which is the shop i used to work at i bought this switch just for the tv dock and the charger i was told it had been dropped in the bath so i paid nothing for this nintendo switch if we can get something from it today wicked if not i'll have to see what kind of a state it's in to sell or worst case we'll use it as parts now i know some people really enjoy these sorts of stories because again dropped in the bath you can see how filthy it is uh it could be over very very quick <laughs> what i'm gonna do is take it apart i'm not even gonna attempt to even look inside the charging port it doesn't have the serial number attached pretty safe to say i think this will be going into a new chassis if there is some sort of miracle that the board itself inside is going to work. So I'm going to take it apart and I'll be back with you in a second. Before we do that, a quick word from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your website for DIY. Get an instant quote on your PCBs at a low cost with fast delivery. New customers will also get a $5 welcome bonus. Fully customize your PCB with a few clicks, including the thickness of the board to the color of the solder mask. PCBWay also offers services in CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and also injection molding. Head on over to the gift store and grab yourself a multimeter or a soldering iron. PCB Way has it all. Thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the repair. I've already got the ultrasonic cleaner all warmed up, up to temperature. I put it on this morning because I was like, this is dropped in the bath. Best case, it's going to need a clean in the ultrasonic. Best case. That just kind of fell off. And you know, if this is too far gone, then we can use parts from it potentially to try and fix perhaps tens of of other Nintendo Switches. So it will do us justice, that is for sure. Screws are all intact as well, remarkably. Okay, first looks, here we go. Oh God, ready? Eek. Okay, all right, yeah. Visible signs of the liquid damage. That's okay though. When it comes down to liquid damage, the most important question is kind of how long has it been liquid damaged for? If it's been like a day or two, the odds of fixing it are very good. If it's been something that's been put in a drawer for six months, it's a different story entirely. Safe to say, it's definitely liquid damaged. Let me really quickly clean up this chassis and just see what kind of a state the screen itself is in i highly doubt this screen is going to work here we've got real bad markings on there you can see here and up here so i wouldn't be able to sell this as is i'd have to use a donor chassis there is a lot of liquid damage on here but it does look like oh no it has been opened look you can tell because the foam here is ripped let me take the motherboard out and then uh, again we'll see how bad it actually is Right, a quick look under the scope. Good old M92T36 has seen better diddly days, hasn't it? Is that resistor still there or is it flaking off? No, it still seems to be rather strong. So M92, we've obviously got some uh, clear issues here. BQ in the charging circuit, yeah, clear issues. Again, though, it's, I mean, this is water damage. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's not big corrosion yet, though, you know, from what I can tell. The charging port has seen better days. Lord, a glove, look at that. How many hairs we got down here? Okay. We got corrosion on the actual port itself. Uh, wow, that is pretty bad around the max IC as well. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the state of the CPU and the RAM is going to be. That's probably going to be my decision as to if I even put this in the ultrasonic cleaner or not. Around here is pretty bad. We got the NAND. How is that looking under there? Okay, that's all right. We have a little bit of rust around there, but again, nothing too severe. Here is quite bad. Yeah, this is this is bad. This is bad. Uh, this is the LCD connector. Yes, it's rather bad. It's rather bad. It's like it's been dropped in a bath. Fan connector. Yeah, just a little bit of rust there. Okay, all right. Yeah, some of these components might have just gone absolutely kaput. I've just lifted this up. Okay, do you know what? 
yeah, around the APU itself and the uh, the RAM, it looks pretty corrosion free. So we might be all right. You can see down there, look, that all looks okay. These are the two RAM ICs. Well, I think it has to be done at least to see if uh, it has some sort of life is just to stick it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Could this be a waste of time? Absolutely. But if we do get it to work, I'll obviously list it on eBay and say that it's been water damaged. It's been through the ultrasonic cleaner. That might net us 50 pounds. And that is 50 pounds of pure profit. I'm just giving the board a little clean with IPA first to get most of the grime off and most of that corrosion. So then when it goes into the ultrasonic, it doesn't leave all that grime and corrosion in the actual ultrasonic. Because that means... I have to change it more often. And I'll only stick this in for about five minutes or so. What I will say is that the back of the board was actually relatively clean. I've done a quick inspection. The only bit of uh, liquid damage I think was around here, the fuel gauge. Right, onwards and upwards to the ultrasonic cleaner. Are we down and out or is there a little possibility that this could work? Right, here we go. So we're actually on 52. I've set it to 60. 52 is going to be absolutely fine for this small board. So let's have a look at the sauna. Look at that. Absolute hot tub. Just hang the basket up. There we go. In it goes. What is a little bit of a cloudy color right now? I don't know if that's good or bad. I have no idea. And then pop, pop, lid on. Uh, we'll go with a six minute because of the slightly lower temperature. We'll go six minutes and that should be good. Out of the ultrasonic, I've given it a nice dry as well. How are we looking? So this is around M92. We obviously had the liquid damage around there. That resistor is still a little bit kaput, but it might be okay. The M92 IC itself is looking all right. The solder joints are okay. They just look a little bit dull from this angle, but that's fine. Around BQ, look at that. It's like a completely different device. Pretty sure that's more of a stain than actual liquid damage. Yeah, that's on the that's on the actual PCB. So the liquid damage has been cleaned up there. I mean, it's looking pretty pucker inside. That connection looks okay. Sorry, the FPC connector, that looks all right for the Joy-Con. The actual port, look at that. Are these connections solid? Yeah, they are absolutely fine. How's it looking now? Yeah, no bent pins, nothing like that. And see maybe a tiny bit of corrosion just left on here, there. Put a drop of IPA in the toothbrush down there. There we go. That looks better. Max I see where it was probably the worst. Yeah, 10 times better than what it was, that's for sure. Another really bad part was this LCD circuit, hey? I think the actual ceramic part of this cap is, is gone and done for. That cap looks... I mean, that might even be a hole there. I'm not too sure. But the ceramic part of this cap is gone. So that might need to come off. As for the LCD driver, which is BGA, that might be all right. What about the FPC connector? How do we do in here? Again, doll pads. That one might be actually officially corroded here. What I will say as well is that the FPC connector at the top here looks, that looks rusted. The, these, the, this does not look good here. So I might have to change this out regardless. Well, quick multimeter test to make sure that we don't have any bad shorts and then uh, we can attempt to power this on and see what kind of a draw we're getting. If I see some sort of attempted boot, what I'll do is I'll replace the FPC connector because I don't think we're going to get a display anyway and I'll replace that cap. Then I'll see if we get an actual display. But I just want to see if it, if it boots normally first. There's no point in me putting more time into this if it's not booting. So quickly before that, meter in continuity mode. Any obvious shorts around M92? Nothing obvious. What about CPU cap? Seems to be okay, 520 ohms. BQ is pretty written off with water damage as well, wasn't it? So let's have a look. No shorts there. And also just make sure our fuse is okay. Fuse is fine. All right, so I'm going to give this power and see what happens. Let's go. C to C. No battery in just yet. I'm just seeing if we get like a short or anything. 80 milliamps isn't great as far as I'm aware. That's not, uh, that's not fantastic. We shouldn't have anything here really. So I wonder if that's going to display any heat on the board. Yeah, 80 milliamps is not good. This should be zero. If anything, we need this to kind of flicker. Because if it does flicker, it means that it's not high enough to draw anything, which is what we want. So it's drawing something, 80 milliamps. So something is wrong with this board. If I had the battery connected, I would go ahead and say maybe it's just trickle charging, but we have nothing connected. Over on the thermal cam, we've got the APU, which is getting warm, which sometimes can be normal, but not in most cases. What is quite normal is the BQIC getting hot around about 36 degrees. That will happen with hardly any draw. There's nothing else really on this side that's getting... Warm, so what about this side? Okay, again, back of the APU, we've got the max IC just here. And down here, seems to be getting a bit warm, and maybe that's not the BQ. What is that? Put the macro lens on and see if we can zoom in a little bit and see if we can really see what is getting hot. I think it is just BQ. So that's 36.2. If I turn it over, that's exactly on this side of the board. I mean, it's hovering over one of those resistors or caps, but again, I think that's just the back of BQ. So let me just double check, and I'll, uh, I'll measure 
just around this small circuit here and confirm. I've measured around all of this area on the back and everything seems to be uh, the same as what I have on a donor board. What I will do though, is just in case I've got any little bits of corrosion underneath here, I'm gonna reflow this with a bit of flux and do the exact same for the max IC that we have down here because if there is any other corrosion under here, it might be causing issues. Kind of counterproductive because I've already put it in ultrasonic, but if I need to put it in again, I will do so. I just wanna see if this gives us any further life. And again, if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna call it quits with this one because it, it could be a rabbit hole. 400 degrees Celsius here. What I need to be careful of is this little uh, bit of plastic here on the side. If I actually turn the board around, I should be able to just heat away from it. Drop some flux. There we go, it's reflowed. Because sometimes the corrosion can affect the solder balls underneath. And then I have uh, cracks in the joints. Then we'll just do this little IC here, which is indeed the fuel gauge. Oh, interestingly, I don't know if you saw the pop on camera. A, oh, the cap is just two tombstone. But it looks like it is kind of popcorned in this area. The board looks a little bit bigger here. If I put it, oh, you can't. Or, or has it? Am I just seeing things? I don't know. But it almost kind of looked like the board pushed up a bit. I wonder if that's because there's water inside the PCB. Because again, this isn't. This is only 400 degrees, which I know it sounds like a lot, and it probably is for quite a small board. But you don't very often get the uh, the popcorn in on these at that sort of heat, in my experience, anyway. Give it some IPA. Uh, being honest, I can't tell you if that looks any better. But let's plug it in and see if we still have that small draw. What happens? Do we still get that 90? Yeah, we do, unfortunately. And that was after a little bit of a reflow. It could be that the APU has gone, even though our cap's not sure. It could be a, again a plethora of things. It might be something up here on the LCD circuit itself even though none of these components are getting hot no shorts in this area just to confirm as well it's really hard to tell before you put an item in the ultrasonic how it's going to look after obviously so it's worth just giving it a little bit of a punt and seeing if uh seeing if it was going to work but unfortunately we're going to can that one there are definitely parts that i can use on here though so it's not a complete and utter waste i might fix 10 nintendo switches with just this board as for the housing there's not really much i can do with this bearing in mind how corroded the uh the lcd is etc yeah this is uh this is not looking good not so great for item number one but at least nothing lost so let's move on to item number two this one i'm actually really looking forward to i paid listen to this 140 pounds for this playstation 5 digital edition console i'll tell you what though the wrapping paper here is a1 i love this and i know what you're all thinking joey why on earth was this console so cheap it says here there is an issue booting up it powers on with safe mode screen enabled beeps two times and powers off so potentially a software issue my head goes straight to just trying to reinstall the playstation 5 software failing that potentially worst case like an ssd controller issue the main question in all of our heads right now is has it been opened before oh dear have we been bamboozled is the question let's plug in our leads and just make sure we do get a safe mode display because if not i will cry here we go turning the console on we get a beep we get a light do we go straight into our white light oh that fan did not sound happy we do go straight into a white light which is good oh what was that three beeps and off so i had a real loud fan spin i'll do it again real loud fan spin does it do that no goes to a white light do we get the beeps one two three beeps on the console i don't think that's going to be something like apu or something that is unfixable and the reason being is because it's almost reporting some sort of failure you know by communicating the three beeps what failure who knows but i'm pretty hopeful except for the fact that it's been open before that's putting me off a little bit actually one thing i'm just going to see if i can hold it and put it into safe mode before i start tearing it apart hold down the power button again i can hear the fan ramping no, I can't even get it into safe mode. Okay, fine. Right then, let's uh, let's get it apart and see what the situation is. Good thing about this as well is it it's a digital edition. So if we do need to do something with the BIOS to perhaps reset the console, maybe it's a BIOS issue, then we don't need, for example, the disk drive to make things a little bit more complicated. Could we end up making our first big profit with this console? You know what? That stick has come off. Uh, maybe this has been peeled off. I don't know. Yeah, it has. So someone has gone a little bit further on this. I also don't know if those beeps are for um for overheating perhaps, you know, beep 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 and then overheating. I'm just gonna disconnect the LED ribbon cable because it looks a tiny bit chewed here. I wonder if that's gonna do anything. Plug in the fan to at least know if it's on or not, I guess. Right, let's see. 
Do we still get the three beeps and does it turn off? Could it have just been a faulty cable? I really highly doubt it, but it's worth a try. Uh, I mean, it's still on. No way. No way. I'm just going to plug in the HDMI. There's no, there's no shot. <laughs> There's no shot. I've just put the chassis on because um, this could be crazy. Again, fan spin. I've taken out the LED light so you won't be able to see here. And over to the phone, you can see the fan is still spinning, changing the display. I have to do it twice, remember. Oh, HDMI one. Is it going to work? Oh, <laughs> I don't believe it. There is no way. Look, the fan's still spinning. No shot. And here we go over to the Elgato game capture. HDCP has been disabled and we're in the main menu. I cannot believe it. I'm in shock. And we're going to test the theory right now. I'll plug the cable back in and see if we get the three beeps again. I am, however, a little bit nervous to do that because I don't want to really break the console. You know, we're starting up into safe mode, so I wasn't liking something. But let's just see. Okay, so console's on. Let's turn it off. Maybe perhaps then somebody went into this, moved that cable around somehow or trapped it with the fan. And that's when the, the issue uh, developed. Okay, console's off because the fans stopped spinning. Let's take that out. Stick this back in. I'll show you the cable in a second under the microscope. So put that in. But then we plug in power. All right, I don't even need to plug in the HDMI. See that? See that light that came on there? That wasn't happening, obviously, without the LED plugged in, Joey. But if I go to power it on, the fan is ramping. I can hear it ramping. It's now slowed down, but if we wait two seconds, there we go. The three beeps turns off. I can't believe it. What a win with this. Let me show you under the microscope the cable. It's just here. Look, that's it. That's what's causing it. I just, I caught it on the corner of my eye. I think Phil actually went over this in a video. It's a design flaw from Sony because if this gets a little bit loose, I'm not even sure how it's meant to go. I think it's meant to go down here like that. But clearly, like I said, I think someone's put this back together and they've clamped it down and you can see it lines up exactly with the screw hole. So somebody's just clamped this down here. And that's caused our issue. And obviously, when we go to plug it in, which is here, it's causing a short, which it, it, throws, a, it throws a hissy fit. It doesn't like. Now, what I'm going to do is get a replacement cable and just make sure that that is the issue. All right, this is pretty simple to do, supposedly, anyway. Just lift this off like that. Pull back this sticker and remove that cable. Now, realistically, could I just solder those connections together? I, I probably could, but I feel like the better way would be to just replace the cable because I've got tons of them anyway. And obviously, just make sure that's not in a position where it's going to happen again by putting it down there. There we go. All right. Well, let's just test it now quick, shall we? I don't need to put it all back together just to test this. So uh, three, two, one. We have the light. There is potential that it could be this little main board as well, but I think the proof is in the fold in the wire. Blue light. Hasn't gone to safe mode, which is good. White light, there we go. And again, over to OBS. Amazing, just go on to quick play real quick. Yeah, and this one's working, I can't believe it. I've been waiting for one of these fixes and today I got extremely lucky. What a result. Let's head on over to Sally's spectacular spreadsheet to confirm everything. Let's go. Here we go and I do actually have some good news and that good news is that the Switch has sold. However, the good news is met with some bad news and it was only £70. To be precise, after fees, it was £67.19. I thought it might net us around about £27 profit and it only gave us £13.20. Ridiculous considering that I bought it for £50. I'm just going to add the Nintendo Switch here even though we're keeping it for parts. And the digital PS5, cost was £140, parts is zero. Estimated sell price... £230 is what I'm going to go for, which should net us around about £70 profit estimated. That brings our total estimated profit up to £92.95 and our actual total profit because the Nintendo Switch sold up to a loss of minus £28.33. Total hours worked. I'm going to say max an hour and a half for this. Max. The PS5 was a, a 15 minute thing. The Switch putting in the ultrasonic, uh, giving it a reflow, doing some diagnostics. I'll say I'll say an hour and a half in total. So 1.5 there. So I think after today's episode, we're going to be in the positive. Maybe our luck is just about to turn around and let's keep that snowball rolling. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. As always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.